So I'm Sarah Cowie. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Auckland. So there are a whole lot of reasons why we do them. I mean, the most obvious one is that we have an itch that we need to scratch, but also we seem to touch our faces more when we feel anxious or also when we are concentrating on something and we're trying to keep our attention on a task. And there's a school of thought that says that this face touching might relate in some way to, it might have a social function, so it might show that you are sort of self-aware. There's also a school of thought that says that this could be some sort of leftover behavior from primate grooming that's just kind of come through evolution. So nobody knows quite why we touch our face for these reasons, but there are definitely some environmental triggers that tend to occur before we are likely to touch our face. So I guess there are kind of three, three main triggers. One of those is it seems that when people are concentrating on something, and particularly when you're trying to keep your attention focused on a task, often we find people touch their faces at that kind of point. When you're feeling a little bit anxious for whatever reason, that's also another situation where people tend to be touching their faces and then for very practical reasons if, if you're itching or you know you need to adjust your lipstick or whatever um, there's another situation where you might touch your face that one probably a little bit more conscious but again that's the a lot of the time we'll just you know brush hair out of the way or itch an eyebrow without so much as a thought It's it's a little difficult because the thing with habits is that very often we don't realize that we're doing them. So they are things that occur, actions that occur without any conscious thought. And it turns out that we probably touch our face somewhere more than 23 times an hour. And if you think about all the times you remember touching your face, you think, no, that's that's not possible. I don't touch my face that much. But people touch their face a lot and of course it becomes worse when you are thinking about it and trying not to touch it so and habits are tricky things to break particularly when you have a long history of engaging in those habits it certainly seems like it is doesn't it yes so I guess the thing is to try and shift the focus from not doing it to being more aware of those environmental triggers that are likely to make you want to touch your face. So rather than going through and saying, okay, today I am not going to touch my face, shift focus and think, well, can I be a little bit more aware of my surroundings and what I'm going through? And then I can recognize when I'm likely to be touching my face and hopefully maybe redirect that behavior. I guess it's about, so part of part of it is recognizing that some of those behaviors are not behaviors that anybody is consciously aware of doing. Um, trying to make sure that your environment isn't overly stressful, I suppose, but that's not always possible. But also using just the normal kinds of techniques and approaches that you would use for any sort of behavior with your children or, or indeed anybody around you. So can you, give, uh, for example, incompatible behaviors. So doing something, getting children to do something else with their hands so that they can't be touching their faces while they're doing it, um, things like stress balls, or even just encouraging people to put their hands in their pockets or play a game with your hands or something like that. Obviously that's not possible in all sorts of situations, but um, it's a, I guess it's a good starting point. Things like, so, you know, if you're encouraging any sort of behavior, you want to, rather than just saying, you know, don't do that or explaining not to do it reward when it doesn't happen reward when when you're doing something else so just the same sort of strategies that you'd use for any other behavior right exactly and there are a whole bunch of uh, really strange things coming out like you can get a, a wristband that vibrates when it seems like you're moving your hands towards your face or there's a an app that tracks your movement and tells you off when it seems as if you're tracking towards your face 
So there are a bunch of all sorts of different things. Some of those are geared towards, I guess, the good thing about those is that they make you aware of the situations where you're likely to be touching your face. But the other thing is that those stress balls and fidget spinners and anything that you can do with your hands, take up knitting, whatever, but something that if it's incompatible with touching your face, you're less likely to be doing it. If you make it difficult for you to touch your face, it's less likely that you'll touch your face. Mm -hmm.